sing, sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, lift up your head. Don't be afraid. And let us sing to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us shout, shout to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us Shout to the power of the Lord, come down, lift up your head, and don't be afraid, and let us shout to the power of the Lord, come down, let us dance, dance to the power of the Lord, come down, let us dance to the power of the Lord, come down, lift up your head. And don't be afraid, and let us dance to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us read, read to the power of the Lord. Come down, let us read to the power of the Lord. Come down, lift up your head. Don't be afraid, let us Read to the power of the Lord, come down, oh, let us shout, shout to the power of the Lord, come down, let us shout to the power of the Lord, come down, lift up your head, and don't be afraid, and let us shout to the power of the Lord, come down, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. We want the power of the Lord to come down on us. Praise God. Amen. Greetings from the city of David Church here in Houston, Texas. We thank God for you, those that are tuning in this morning that have turned aside to hear word of the Lord. Praise God. Amen. We celebrate uh -huh, Resurrection Sunday today. Amen. Where our Lord, praise God, amen, rose from the dead and so we're shouting glad for him rising for if he had not risen from the dead praise god amen individuals like me wouldn't have a right to the tree of life but because he was the sacrificial lamb and he laid down his life for me i'm shouting glad this resurrection sunday of what god amen jesus christ has done for me he's done amen so much for me Amen. I could not tell it all. And so we thank God for you, you, and you, and we dare not uh, thank those that support this ministry. We thank God for you, those that support us and those that uh, hold us up. Praise God. Amen. That, we're, that allow us to do the very things that we do. We praise God. Amen. For the, minister, the prison ministry that has started back up. And so we ask that you would pray for because of Jesus Praise God, as we go into the prisons, that God would touch those who are incarcerated and touch their families and bring forth change into their life. Praise God. I mean, those that go into the hospital, praise God, we're praying for you that as you go into those hospital rooms and you begin to speak the word of God, God would manifest his word in individuals' lives and those that are sick will raise up off their sick beds. Praise God. Amen. So we thank God for you. Now, there may be some that want to support this ministry. Praise God. Amen. And you can do so under Cash App, under the City of David Church, Houston. And our Cash App ID is dollar sign, C-O-D, Church, Houston, the number seven. Praise God. Amen. We thank God for you who will support this ministry. And we want to say, drop us a line. Drop us a line at CODchurch, the number seven at gmail.com. Let us know how we are doing. Praise God. We, are, we would love to hear from you. And you may also go over to YouTube and you'll find some of our videos under City of David Church, Houston. And we ask that you would go ahead and peruse it. And there may be something in there that would give you an uplift. You may be going through something, but the word of God can change your life. The word of God can come in, uh -huh, wash you afresh, and do some new things in your life. Now, those that have tuned in, you already have uh, today's message on the screen. Uh, a case of a misunderstanding. Yeah, a case of a 
misunderstanding. And we do not have it on the screen, but this morning we have a subtopic. Uh, let me make it perfectly clear. Yeah, let, let me make it perfectly clear. And so we're going over this morning to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. And we're going to start, I believe I have it on the screen, around the 44th verse through the 49th verse. Father, we thank you this morning and we bless your name. We thank you, God, for your tender mercies and your goodness. We thank you, God, even right now, God, that you would touch us, oh God, in your word today. We celebrate our risen king, our risen Lord. We celebrate on today, oh God, that you rose on today. But there was more to it than just your rising, oh God. God, we thank you even right now. God, unfold these scriptures to us this morning that they might penetrate our heart, that they might, oh God, subdue our minds. Touch us this morning, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lift us and lift the heavy burdens, oh God, uh, for there is a reward for those, oh God, that hold on to the horns of the altar. God, we thank you even right now when we bless your name, God. We ask that you would touch this morning and touch Every word that goes out today, we ask that you would bless and that you would sanctify God. Even right now, in the name of Jesus, God, we rebuke every foul spirit right now, every evil thought. We rebuke it now and put it under subjection in the name of Jesus. God, that your word may be go out and that it may be clearly woo, understood this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Amen and amen. I hope you've grabbed your Bibles or your personal devices by now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Again, uh, we hope that we can say something this morning that would encourage your heart to see God in a whole new different light. Many people, amen, see him, but uh, we want, our intention is that you may see him through the scriptures, not, not for what somebody said, but through the scriptures and what uh -huh. Our Lord has put in our hands. St. Luke chapter 24, verse 44. And he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures, and said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer, and to rise from the dead the third day. Hallelujah, resurrection. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name, Christ's name, among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And ye are witnesses of these things. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued mm -hmm, with power from on high. I didn't say amen because I'm not finished. Over in St. John, and we preach this, but I want you to get the gist of this. St. John 17 and 20, St. John 17 and 20, that there be no mistake, Jesus is talking in the red. St. John, the 17th chapter and the 20 verse, he says, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Now may the Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearers of his word. I read that last part, but you might understand that, that Christ is speaking to us and not just speaking to the disciples. This, 
this word has gone out uh, into the whole world mm -hmm. that we might believe the testimony of the disciples. Thank you, Jesus. Here we find that uh, in our theme this morning, a case of a misunderstanding is that we find that in this 24th chapter, which uh, if you have it marked in your Bible, this is Sunday. If you look at uh, the scheme of things and from where Christ went to be uh, persecuted, you'll find this Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then there's Sunday. And so here we are. We're at Sunday. Jesus has risen, but uh, there are some significant things that has happened that we might understand why I gave it the theme that I did. So many times we find that we misunderstand uh -huh, uh, 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 the scriptures because, uh, because of our mindset. We, we misunderstand what, what Christ has said, but uh, it behooves us that we search the scriptures, for in them we think we have eternal life. And so here when we go down and we look at the whole scripture within itself, we find that in different places, uh, different individuals were spoken to. And as they were spoken to, it almost uh, looks as though they did not understand or they did not uh, realize or they did not grasp the fact that Jesus says, I'm going to die, but I'm going to rise again. Hmm. When the women went down to uh, the sepulchre to, uh -huh, to find that it was empty, and the angels asked him, why seek ye the living among the dead? Mm -hmm. They misunderstood. They, they, they misunderstood that Jesus says, on this day, I'm going to rise. Woo, my God from heaven. Aren't you glad that he rose today? And there's some significance to him rising today. Not just, oh, hey, you know, my, my, I got my pretty dress on and my pretty hat on and he is risen today. But there, there's a lot that go on with it, baby. He, he didn't just rise, praise God, amen, that we could look good. But he, ride, he rose today for a significant purpose. Yes, he did. Then it says that as, they, as the women went and they began to tell the disciples about it, uh, it says that uh, in the 11th verse, it says, and their words seemed to them as idle tales, and they believed them not. Come on now. Look at today's world and, and, and look at how the thought process is today. We find that uh-huh, uh, 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 the majority of things in this world was not created by man. And all of a sudden, praise God, man and his infinite wisdom and, and all of his research and all of his doctorate degrees and so on and so forth, praise God, only thing they could come up with was a Big Bang Theory. Wow. We have all this education and we have all this great learning, but only thing we can come up with today is just, boom, it happens. But if you ask them, there is a scientific reason for whatever else you can give them. They'll give you this long dissertation as to why, what, and where, but when it comes to the earth and it comes to the creatures in the earth, they, it's just, it just happens. Now, if you want to scratch your head on something, that's mind-boggling. Because what we have done is we have pushed away the creator. And we have allowed man to come in and be our gods. If you want, somebody said, give me fact. I'm going to give you fact this morning. All you got to do is walk outside and look up. It's not man-made when you look up. You go in the nighttime and, and you get to some dark space, the dark place, and you look up in the sky and you can see the stars. You can see the moon and you can see the sun, see the sun. And all of a sudden, praise God, the disciples misunderstood. 
After being with Christ for three years, they, they misunderstood. It's a shame for us uh, to uh, be in the church and we misunderstand uh, what this is all about. See, it's not about, let me tell you right now, I think I'm getting ahead of myself, but, but let me tell you right now, uh, you may be a Sunday school teacher, but it's more to it than that, baby. Mm -hmm. You may be the YPWW teacher, but there's is more to that, baby. But uh, th th there's some of that in there. But, but he called us to a greater call outside of the four walls of the building that we meet in. As a matter of fact, Praise God. When we look at uh, us not being able to come into the four walls, some folk just hung their hat and sat around and they're waiting. Waiting. Some didn't know. I, I noticed that there was a lot that was not sitting around waiting for the doors of the church to open. Some of them got busy in teaching, and some of them got busy in witnessing. You can still witness during a pandemic. Praise God. Amen. So when you look at this, you find that they did not believe. It, it seemed like an idle tale. I would love to look at, I would love to have found out where was Peter, uh-huh, uh, 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 while the women came, what was he doing? What, was he somewhere kicking back watching uh, football? W was he somewhere uh, watching a game? Yeah. Because he did not believe the report. Wh who shall believe the report of the Lord? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. See, we misunderstand today, and we, we find that God is, is nothing more than a genie, that he's going to do all the work. But I declare unto you today that God is not going to do all the work. As I begin to stir this morning and begin to wake up, praise God, I begin to think about the talents that God, that God, uh, uh, that Jesus dealt with, that he given, some was given talents. And then I, I came down to the last fella, and the last fella just uh, dug a hole in the ground and didn't do nothing. And the master came, and he was expecting. He said, you, you know that, that, that I expect some interest on my money. And all of a sudden, praise God, you went and dug a hole, and you didn't do nothing. And so I find out that in that parable there that Jesus said, I want you to take what he has and give it to those that have and cast them out. My God. Then we go on and we go on to the 13th verse and we, we find out there was two going to uh -huh, the city of Emmaus, which is no longer there, but back then it was seven miles uh -huh, from Jerusalem. And as they begin to talk about uh, the, the, the affairs of the day, what had happened and what was going on. Now, mind you, just a few days before, they came marching. He, Jesus came riding in on a donkey, and, and they were throwing palms. They were rejoicing. But all of a sudden, it seems that they have totally forgot what the mission of the day was supposed to be. Same thing with our life today. We forget what the mission of Christ is supposed to be. We have to understand that, praise God, amen, there's a mission given to us that we must fulfill. We have to fulfill this mission that was given us. But here, mind you, that the two that was going down to Emmaus and talking about the things of the day, here it is, the misunderstanding. And sometimes, <laughs> the majority of times, we don't even see Jesus in the mix. We miss him. Why? Because if we were to get in his word, we would see the moving of God. How else will we know the movement of God? And how else will we know Christ by not studying his word? It goes something like this. How do you know how God moves unless you read the Old Testament? See how he dealt with those in times of old. 
And you will have a clear understanding of how God moves. See, what we do is we want, we want to say that God is going to move like this and like this. It's strange that I come across so many individuals who say, well, if we serve such a loving God, why does he allow Baby, uh, uh, God giving us free reigns. You have a choice. We talked about the broad way and the narrow way. The broad gate and the narrow gate. We have a choice today to do what God has told us to do or to do what we want to do. Yeah. And so uh, uh, nine times out of ten, we do exactly what we want to do, and then we get in a fix and then we wonder, why is this happening? Well, it's happening because of your mind. You allowed the enemy to come in and trick your mind. He threw you an illusion and you, you, you went for it. It's like fishing. You, you bit it. Boom. Because he know what you love. But you're supposed to fall in love with Christ. So here, as they begin to walk to Emmaus, it seems like nobody is expecting the master to return. Or to rise. Here in the 17th verse, and it says, and he said unto them, Jesus uh, actually came up. Now, now, now mind you, it, th this is <laughs> this is this is this is interesting. Is that as they went and they were talking, here Jesus joins them and they do not recognize Christ. He says, What manner of communication are these? Uh-huh, are these that ye have one? To another as ye walk and are, come on, sad. See, if they had understood, they would have realized that, yeah, it, it may be a solemn time, but woo, the reward on the other side, the reward is that he says, I'm going to rise again. And I'm going to fulfill the promise of my father. My God, that, that'll that make you happy. They, they should have been on the edge of their seats. The anticipation, praise God, should have had them on the edge of their seat. It's just like us today with the anticipation if I serve God and I do the will of God that woo, there is a house, there, there, there's a mansion built for me. There's a reward on the other side. See, the saints of God get excited when you start talking about when we leave this place. My God, I, I'll be able to see him in peace. But some of us, we, we, we doing so much, so much damnable stuff. We, we don't want to see the end. Praise God, because we think we're getting away with it. Uh huh. We think that if we don't uh, 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 toe the line, we think we're just going to get a pass. There ain't going to be no pass, baby. Praise God. I think the city of Houston started, and I'm not one of them, the city of Day, uh, city of Dave, the city of Houston started sending out uh, warrant requests. This is that time of the year. They start sending out the warrant cards. Yeah, you got a warrant. For, and and I'm, not, I'm not part of that. Praise God. Amen. The judge wants to see you. <laughs> the judge wants to see you. You don't get no free pass, baby. And so the same thing with Christ. When we stand before him, praise God, amen. When it's judgment time, there is no free pass. And so they begin to talk and they begin to say, uh, uh, Jesus said, uh, and they said unto them, and he said unto them, what things? He asked the question, what things is going on here? And they begin to outline and they begin to talk about the things of Christ, and they begin to deal with him. But here, look at it closely. If you look at 21, it says, but they trusted that it had been he which have redeemed. I'm sorry, what I say? Thank you. But we trust, trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel and besides all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Here is a case of a misunderstanding. Out of all the time that they spent with Christ and out of all the word that has come down, they still thought that Christ was going to come to redeem Israel, uh, that Israel would take their rightful place as leaders in the nation. 
but they missed, they missed the mark and they, they missed their point because God tried to get them uh, to do right and God tried to get them to be a holy people but they, they disdained God and they kept sinning against God and God says I need to come up with something else because these stiff necked people they just don't get it and they don't understand and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my son the very word of God and he's going to go down as a sacrificial lamb and he's going to lay down his life for the world so that's the only way that we have uh, part in this ministry and then Jesus goes down and I said I wasn't going to read it but I'm going to read it anyway it says then Jesus said unto them oh fools and slow of heart to believe that all uh, all that the prophets have spoken ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory there was a purpose for Christ doing this it wasn't really just all for you, but, but it was that he might go into his glory because he was a sacrificial lamb and because uh, he laid down his life just for us. And so we find that there was a case of a misunderstanding. Here today, we have misunderstandings left and right. We have a misunderstanding about the cause of Christ. Some go and they get baptized and they say, it's all said and done. Once saved, always saved. It don't work that way, baby. Praise God. Amen. It says, for the wages of sin is death. That's why you have to be holy. And that's why he said, I want you to be sanctified. That's why we have to be perfect in this walk. Well, who can be perfect? Well, only God can make us perfect. So if you're looking at making yourself perfect, it ain't going to work. It'll never work. It's all about God. And I ain't got fat to where I really need to be. So we find that here uh, it, it seems as though they, were mis they misunderstood the word of the Lord. They misunderstood the words of Christ. And we do that today. We misunderstand the things of God. The forewarning Jesus had given to his uh, predictions, his death and resurrection, the literal events happening just as he had said it would, mm -hmm. should not have been a surprise. He had foretold the events and forewarned his followers. What's that that they say in the courtroom? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. We've got the word of God in paperback. We got the word of God in nice bound leather. And we got the word of God on our iPads and on our phones and on our computers. Mm -hmm. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. We've got to get in this word, and, and some folk will tell you, and that's why we try to go with Scripture, because we want you to know where to find and how it's found. Because we good at saying what he said, she said. No, 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 no. It's not about he said, she said. It's about the word of God. What did God say in his word? That's what we're to follow. I go on YouTube all the time, and I see these, uh, can I use the word crackpot? I guess I can use that word, crackpots on YouTube and folk just, just giving out all this misinformation and we follow it 100 miles an hour like nobody business. And we become a people of itching ears because we don't want to take hold of this gospel plow. We don't want to follow the rules of Christ. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. But what happens is we'll listen to other folk and we'll call it gospel. And then we just as happy as a lark. Don't understand that there's danger approaching. That's why you get so many people who click away when they when they when they hear in the word of truth. They click away and say it ain't right. But then when you actually go to the scripture, you find out that it's true. Well, my pastor or my missionary, well, well, if they're telling you contrary to the word of God, baby, you better ask God, where can I go and find the truth? And I'm going to show you later on in this message where the truth lies. Here it says in Luke 
18, 31, it says, uh, 18 and 31, it says, Then he took unto him twelve, unto him the twelve, and said unto them, Behold, we go to Jerusalem. And all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. So he says, look, uh, that's found in Luke 18 and 31. He says, it's going to come to pass. He says, I'm forewarning you right now. My wife and the weatherman have a problem. They just can't jive. She said, he said it was supposed to rain. And if there be no rain, so you understand that if the wind blow it off, because we re relying on electronics. But she said, he was wrong because we got no rain. <laughs> but we must understand that Jesus forewarned the people that he was going to die. I got to skip forward. Y'all help me. The utter necessity that Christ die and rise. The word deal, 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 D E I, means that his death was an imperative, a necessity, a constraint. He had to die. That's why he came. Yeah. It's, it's just the same way as when we come to church. What is your expectation? Are you expecting the move of God? Or you just going to see your best friend or who's there at church today? He understood that he must die. He says, till heaven and earth pass, one jot and one tittle shall not pass, shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. Matthew 5 and 18. <laughs> Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and the foreknowledge of God. Ye have taken, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God has raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Acts 2, 23 through 24. So he had to die. It was a must. But in dying, he accomplished this great task of freeing us from our sins. Note that Christ gave the three divisions of the Old Testament. He says the law, the prophets, and the Psalms. The whole Old Testament prophesied of his coming and his salvation. All you got to do is read. When you begin to read, you'll see that the prophecy and the foretold of Christ is right there. Here in 1 Corinthians 2 and 14, it says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And as I thought about that, you know, I listened to uh, a lot of folks that they will say, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm spiritual. And I'm trying to think, spiritual how? And, you know, I, I tried to come up with, with it, in the, in the, their logic in my own mind. You, you're spiritual how? How are you spiritual? Because if you were something spiritual, you would be believing Jesus Christ. You would believe that God sent his son. If you were spiritual... But that's just a play on words, and that's just, it's kind of a, a leave me alone <laughs> catchphrase that, you know, uh, I'm spiritual, but, you know, but that's not the purpose that Christ has come. The Bible declares they that worship God must worship him in what? Spirit and in truth. What is truth? And everybody run around looking for the truth. The truth is God's word. Mm-hmm. When you begin to believe and understand that Jesus Christ came, you will worship God in spirit and in truth. Not what you think, but it's what God has designed, the plan that he set forth. Mm -hmm. Yes. A case of a miss 
understanding. The particular prophecies were threefold. And it goes something like this. Christ must suffer and arise. Thank you, Lord, for arising today. When he rose today, he could forgive me of my sin. And he said I, he'll take my sins and he'll throw them in the depths of the sea and won't remember them no more. Woo, isn't that wonderful? That right now, excuse me, right now, Christ rose from the dead. He'll take my sins and he'll throw them in the depths of the sea. He won't remember them no more. Well, let me give you a good scenario. You know how your friend always like to dig up what you did and how you did. Remember when you did. God ain't like that. And when you get saved, uh, mind you, baby, uh, the devil is an accuser of the brethren. And so what happens is when you get saved, here he come, and he digging up all your dirt. And what happens is God came and saved you real good and, and delivered you. And here come the devil trying to bring you down, putting a cloud, uh, although I, I like cloudy days. But uh, he put a cloud over your head and, and make you feel bad. Oh, look what I've done. Oh, uh, uh, that's just the devil, baby. That's not God. God is not like the Indians used to see, who used to say, uh, 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 you know, uh, he speak with forked tongue. God ain't like that. God, uh, he said, I would that all men would be saved. And so it's an opportunity while Christ has risen from the dead for us to commit our life to him that he might take away all the sins in our lives and that we might serve him. Yeah. Then the next one says, repentance and forgiveness must be preached. It's got to be preached. Why else are you here and why else? Have you accepted Jesus Christ that you might just escape uh, the punishment of sin? But, baby, you have to read the fine line. When you sign up on a job, they'll tell you at the bottom, it says, these are all your duties. And then what does it say in the fine print? And other duties assigned. And then you say, well, why I got to do this? Because did you read the contract? It says, and other duties assigned. Don't think that you just come over here and you sit and then uh, there's nothing to do. There, there's work to do. And, go. and so because Christ died, he wants you to help build the kingdom of God. And so repentance and forgiveness must be preached. There was a young lady the other day and I was on Twitter. And she said, you know, Christians need to stop uh, trying to preach to other people. And I'm wondering, what does that mean? Isn't that what we've been called to do? It amazed me how we have individuals who don't really understand the concept of this resurrection that we celebrate today. Not only did he rise up with all power and he, he deliver us, we have a job to do and an obligation to do for the kingdom of God. Come on now, don't you think you owe God something? No, no, no. I mean more than just hallelujah, praise you, Jesus. No, 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 no. There's work to be done. There, there, it's time that we would uh -huh, put our nose to the grindstone and that we would uh, labor in the vineyard of Christ. But here's my real point, and, and I still got a few more minutes. The third point at the particular prophecies were foretold. And I love this one because we have a big old fight over this right now. You just ask somebody. Just ask somebody. And I'm going to tell you what it is. And then you ask somebody. Because there's a big old controversy and we have it right in the word of God. I'm a Christian, but here's the word of God. That you refuse. My God. So he came and he died. Rose again. And there were some things that, thank you, Jesus, there were some things that God had put in place. God is a master planner. Paul says, I, I, I'm a master builder. I, I, I come to help build the kingdom of God. And here it is. The third one says, the Holy Ghost and power must be sent. It says, as the disciples went forth witnessing 
they were to be given a wonderful promise, the Holy Ghost, and the power and the power of the Father. There it is. We missed the mark. We find other things to do than what Christ has told us to do. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. And here it is. He outlines what we are to do. He's risen today and taken away our sins. He says that we're to preach the gospel. And preaching the gospel is not cooping. That's not preaching. Preaching the gospel is proclaiming the word of God. Is what we call testimony. God has done great things in my life. And he, he has picked me up out of the dung heap. He's, he's picked me up uh -huh, out of the muck and the mire. And he set my feet upon a rock. That's preaching. God saved my soul. Praise God. Jesus came into my life one day. That's preaching. Everybody go to church and they, 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 they're waiting for uh, the preacher to start hooping and to start singing the message. But, but that's, that's not really preaching. That, that's hooping. We must understand that the pro, proclaiming the word of God is where it's at. And here it says, ah, uh, it says, hmm, it says, the believer was to be equipped for witnessing. This is the whole spectrum of his rising. Not only just having the spirit of Christ, Galatians 5 uh, Ephesians 5 and 22, I think, or Galatians. I think it's Galatians 5 and 2. No, Galatians 5 and 2 is the uh, spirit. But Ephesians 5 and 17, I believe. And so here, uh, the, the culmination of this is that he might be equipped to go out and witness. He might be ready. Mm -hmm. Though there, there is no excuse. It says, uh, yeah, the fruit of the spirit, 5 and 17. It says, uh, Galatians 5 and, 7, 5 and 22, my God. It says, he was to receive the promise of the Father, the Holy Ghost. Jesus says, I'm going. Come on, those that really want to follow Christ, you want to be a Christian. He says, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you another comforter. I'm going to send you the Holy Ghost. Why? Because we need him. It's all part of the package. Oh, it's just Jesus alone. It says, he was to receive power, being clothed with power. The source of the spirit and power is God. Hello, somebody. The source of the power is God. And so all of a sudden, we got folk fighting against the Holy Ghost when Jesus said, I'm sending it back. For you because I know you need it. Yeah. I know that you need this. I, I care about you and I love you. And so I'm going to go back to the father. And I'm going to ask the father. Father don't leave them down there comfortless. Don't leave them down there powerless. But send them some power. That they might be able to witness. That they might be able to withstand the wiles of the devil. Mm-hmm. It says, Christ was to send the promise. The promise was of the Father. God gives the promise. Believers had to tarry. That is, wait upon the Lord and pray for the promise. Are you praying for the promise? Are you waiting for the promise of God today? Or are you just going about doing whatever not realizing that you're out of the will of God. He says you need it to do the will. You need it to you need it that it might perfect you in this mission that I'm sending you on. He's sending us on a mission. Have you started the mission at all? Have you started doing what God has called you to do? And part of the puzzle is the Holy Ghost. You, you can't go and fight the enemy without the Holy Ghost. The promise was from God on high. God himself was the, was the source of the power for all evangelism. 
Now, Christ did not want to send his disciples out unprepared. How many people are unprepared? You know, somebody, I was speaking to somebody, I believe it was on last year, the beginning of last year, and they said, they keep telling me I need the Holy Ghost. Just fussing. It's like, you need it. Why are you fussing? Oh, wait a minute, hold it. Why are you cussing right now? You, you need the Holy Ghost that it might sustain you. Well, you really need to be saved, but, but you need the Holy Ghost that it might sustain you and that it might help you. It is a comforter. Well, let's read about it a little bit. It says, John 14, it says, Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. I'm sorry, John, yeah, John 14 and 17. Neither know him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you. The, he's supposed to be dwelling in you. Jesus said that we're supposed to be the light of the world. And my God from heaven, Lord, help us. Our witness is so raggedy that on our jobs, our witness is so raggedy in our neighborhoods. We, it's just raggedy. If you go back to last week's message, uh, Jesus, or even at the 17th verse that I talked about this morning in uh, St. John, uh, the 17, he talked about we're supposed to have love one for another, for the brethren. The world is a whole new different story. But he said, the people of God are supposed to love one another. But when you look at the life of the so-called Christian, you don't find it. You don't find long-suffering. You don't find meekness. You run around here like a peacock, like somebody owe you something. You, you, you're supposed to show humility. I'm talking about those uh, in, 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 in the body of Christ. I'm not talking about everybody on the outside. And even some of those who claim to be. That's why the Bible says you should know them that labor among you. Everybody talking about I'm a Christian ain't a Christian. Somebody done told them wrong. Let me make this perfectly clear. We were watching the other day and we were watching the documentary uh -huh, of uh, Biggie Smalls. Or, uh -huh, and, 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 and he was saying, uh, if you don't know, now you know. Praise God. Amen. There is no excuse. You know, praise God. Amen. What God is requiring out of your life. Here, Jesus in St. John 14 and 26, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name. Hello. I come in the name of the Lord. Hello. I come in the name of Jesus Christ. You know how I go. When we pray, we do it in what? Jesus' name. Is that right? Father God, I need you to touch. I need you to heal in what? Jesus' name. Praise God. No man come to the Father but by Christ. And so he says, the Father is going to send him unto you mm -hmm. in my name. Whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things, not your own intellect, what the word of God says, and bring all things to your remembrance. Here it is, whatsoever I have said unto you, St. John 14 and 26. What has God said unto you? Some folk run around talking about God spoke to me, and it ain't, you can't even find it in the word of God. He is not going to go outside the word of God. And, and then some, some folk have the colossal nerve to talk about, well, the Bible says there were so many other things that was done that, that, that could not be written in the word of God. I want to tell you something else, baby. God is not the author of confusion. He ain't going to pull out something that we don't know about. He's going to he gonna keep us in the know, baby. He's going to keep us in the know. Praise God. Folk doing this weird stuff. Praise God. Talking about it's God. God told me. The devil told you. Because I can't find what you said nowhere in the word of God. Here in St. John 16 and 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. Again, St. John 16 and 7. 
Jesus said, come on, you wanna, we still want to celebrate the resurrection. Jesus said, I'm going to send you the comforter. And he's knocking at your door. But what has happened is you have believed other folk and you have received, have rejected the Holy Ghost. We don't need it for this day. Baby, you need it because uh -huh, you're you struggling at best. You, you need it today because the enemy is attacking you. You need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will sustain you. He said he will lead you and guide you. But because you refuse it and you let some old crooked person tell you that it's not needed for the day, uh -huh, they going to hell. Because the Bible says, Jesus says, I'm sending it back that you might be equipped to fulfill my purpose. Woo! Hey, glory. You got to fulfill the purpose of God. But you're not doing it. And we think that we're going to make it in any old way. Here in St. Luke 12 and 12, it says, For the Holy Ghost shall teach you in the selfsame hour what ye ought to say. That's our problem. We run our mouth too much. I believe over in James, he, he, he said, study to be quiet. Study to shut your mouth. Come on, this is real teaching here. This is real teaching, preaching. Study to be quiet. Let, let the Spirit of God lead you. See what God has to say. But, but mind you, baby, mind you, the Holy Ghost is going to give you what to say. Not, not you. Not what you think. Yeah. I, I told them off. Yeah, but that wasn't the Holy Ghost, baby. Mm -hmm. The Bible declares, Woo, thank you, Lord. It says, follow peace with all men. Holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but I ain't going to let them just run on my, baby, here, you, you, you're overstepping your bound. You're being disobedient. Let the Holy Ghost, look, God can do more with an individual than we can. Yeah, God can take that individual and crush, crush his soul, praise God, and have him uh, uh, curled up in the corner like a baby, whimpering. That's what God can do when we trust God and we depend on the Holy Ghost. Here it is, uh, Romans 8 and 9. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God, he says, if so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. That's Romans 8 and 9. If you don't have the spirit of Christ, he ain't even yours. Wow, what an eye opener. What an eye opener that we go around and we, we talk about I belong to God, but you don't even have the spirit of Christ. You don't have long suffering. You don't have meekness. But what you do have is you have pride. Yeah, you're prideful. Uh -huh. Unforgiving. You're not meek. You're not temperate. But you're just mean as a, 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 a rattlesnake and mean as a, a junkyard dog. Mm -hmm. And so we find here in 2 Timothy 1 and 14, that good thing, that good thing which we committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost, which dwelleth in us, 2 Timothy 2, 1, and 14. The Holy Ghost is not going anywhere, and the Holy Ghost is here to stay, and, and it behooves us that we, if you don't have it, ask God for it. Get in your prayer closet and begin to ask God, God, I want this thing that I read about and heard about, the Holy Ghost, the third person in the Trinity. And, and let's not be uh, uh, unwise in our understanding. We're going to look at the Holy Ghost and what it performs. He says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And here it is. We got this cigarette smokers, cigar smokers, uh huh, alcoholic teetotalers. Yeah, your body is supposed to be the temple of God. And here it is. You putting all this damnable stuff in your body. That's right. What you watch, praise God, you just infiltrating your body. 
Yeah. The Bible declares all unrighteousness is sin. Well, Jesus turned water into wine. You do your research, baby. You, you just talking, and you heard folks say that because they wanted to drink. But you need to go back, and you need to research these scriptures and find out really what was happening. But because you're dull of hearing and, and because you, you want to be uh, uh, do your own thing, we find ourselves being disobedient to God. And the Bible declares uh, disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. It's supposed to be, which ye have of God, given to us by God. And ye are not your own, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. You're not your own. You've been bought with a price. Come on, let's celebrate Resurrection Day. You've been bought with a price, baby, and you're not your own. That's if you belong to God. That, belo that means if you're a crisis. It's time for us to flip the script on this thing, and it's, it's time that we would get right with God because we're on our way to a devil's hell. And we think that we're doing good. Don't you know that the devil is a trickster? It goes something like this. When Jesus, when, when it says when the spirit, when the devil took him to the pinnacle, praise God, and showed him the earth, showed him the valleys, he began to tempt him like he does today. Come on now. He says, if you bow down to me, I'll give you all this land. How many folk chasing land and money and cars? You think it's God. Oh, I'm so blessed. Oh, isn't God good? And God says, I had nothing to do with that. Because you're chasing this thing. I had nothing to do with it. Then he tempted him while he was fasting. For those who fast, hello. He says, I know you're fasting right now, but uh, you could go ahead, and, go ahead and disobey God and command these stones to be made bread. You, I know you got the power to do it. Come on, that's the devil talking to Jesus. And the thing about it is he talks to us today and all of a sudden we, we follow him. Hook, line, and sinker. Let me say this because I say this to the prisoners and I'm not ashamed to say it here. Grandma could be wrong. Woo! Uh -huh. Grandpa could be wrong. Yeah, yeah. Mama and daddy could be wrong. But I want to let you know that the word of God is true all by itself. Praise God. You need the Holy Ghost uh huh. that it may lead you and guide you into all truth. Uh -huh. Stop listening to what people say and get into the word of God yourself. Uh -huh. uh, I want to let you know. Uh -huh. uh, let me be perfectly clear uh, that you need the Holy Ghost today uh, that it might lead you and guide you. Uh, you need the third person of the Trinity uh, all by himself uh, that he might guide you. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Praise God. He says here in St. John 16 and 13, how be it when he, the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. St. John 16 and 13. This is not all about you, baby. This is about the purpose of God. The Holy Ghost don't come to, 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 to do, uh, let me see. He don't come to do his own thing. You know how we do our own thing? It's your thing. Do, do, do what you want to do. You know how that go. I can't tell you. Some of y'all know that. But it's not about you, baby. It's about God. He says that I'm going to come and I'm going to do the things that I heard God say do. And some of us, we're not hearing what God say do. What we'd rather do is call up our friends on the phone or ask somebody at the job, what do you think? Baby, you don't need to ask them, praise God, if you got the spirit of God. Get in God's word and see what God's word say about the whole matter. We run around with itching ears trying to figure out what folk think. It don't matter what folk think. Only thing matter is that the word of God be preached, the word of God be taught, and the word of God be followed. Yes. It says, which things also we speak, not in 
the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but we, the Holy Ghost, but which, I'm sorry, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing, here it is, come on, you know folks say, you, 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 you so heavenly minded, you ain't no earthly good, the devil is a lie. He says, comparing spiritual things with spiritual, 2 Corinthians 2 and 13. You're supposed to always be in the spirit and you should always be judging things whether they be of God or not. We just take something and we just run with it. That's why it's so bad for that folk that only come to church on Sunday. You don't come no other time of the week. Praise God. You come and hear a tidbit that the pastor preached, but you don't really understand the, the longevity of the word of God. And so you take what he say and, and, and you call it done, but, but you don't understand really what's behind what he's saying. And you don't read when you go home. But here the Holy Ghost is going to teach you and he's going to guide you and he's going to help you if you allow him. And I know I'm going over my time, but I'm continuing on today. Come on, he's risen. Come on, let's get happy today. He is risen. Praise God. God is risen. Thank you, Jesus. It says, but the anointing which ye have received, if you received it, of him abideth in you. And ye need not that a man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, mm -hmm, and is true, and is truth, and is no lie, and even as it hath taught you. Ye shall abide in him, 1 John 2 and 27. You have to abide in Christ. The Holy Ghost should abide in you, and you should abide in him. He should have free reign in your life. God, I don't care nothing about all this stuff I got, but God, what I care about is your anointing. God, what I care about is the Holy Ghost reigning and ruling in my life. I want the Holy Ghost in my home, and I want the Holy Ghost to go with me on my job. I want the Holy Ghost in my church. Praise God. Amen. I want the Holy Ghost in me. Praise God. I want my family saved, and I want deliverance to come. Praise God. Amen. I, I don't just want it a, a, a little tickled on Sunday. I want the Holy Ghost walking and ruling in me. The Holy Ghost shouldn't be manifest in you. John 14 and 21. Uh -huh. When used in the sense of an unveiling or revelation, it suggests that the new thing has come to light. That something never known by man before is made known. That's the Holy Ghost revealing his word. Uh -huh. Some mystery uh, has now been revealed. It is something that cannot be discovered by man's reason or wisdom. It is a mystery that is hidden from man and beyond his grasp. Yeah. Herein, is John 14, 21 through 22, it means that Jesus' presence is revealed, brought to light, illuminated, manifested, quickened in the life of the believer. Come on. If you got the spirit of Christ in you that comes to save and deliver, Praise God. There should be some manifestation of who Christ is in your life. Hello. If it, if, if it was so, if it was not wrong to cuss, uh, Peter cussed and went away. And then Jesus said, <laughs> Jesus said, when y'all go, go, tell Peter to come on. Tell Peter to come on. And then he told him, uh, uh, when you are delivered, strengthen the brethren. God, Jesus understood he wasn't where he was supposed to be. And you know you're not where you're supposed to be. It, it's right today that we celebrate the resurrection. But come on, let's get it right today. All that he died for, all that he suffered and bled for, come on, let's get it right. God, forgive me of my sins. I've sinned. I've done wrong. And I need to come back to the altar, to the throne of God. For the Bible declares that the earth is his footstool and heaven is his throne. And so I bow down to you that you might forgive me, God, of all of my sins. It means that he manifests himself to his disciples in a very special way. 
he discloses his person, his nature, and, and goodness. He illuminates himself within their hearts and lives. Come on, and lives. He, he's supposed to live in us. Uh -huh. In him, we live, move, and have our being. Yeah. He gives a very special uh, consciousness within their souls. I'm closing out with these few scriptures. And, it, and when you go over to uh, Acts and you'll find out that uh, he says, uh -huh, and, and Peter on the day of Pentecost was, was full, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one accord in one place. They were in one mind. We waiting for what Jesus told us to do. Come on now. We, we here waiting because Jesus gave us marching orders. We're here because Jesus told us that we need to stay here and wait because we're part of this ministry. We're part of this building of the kingdom of God. And so we're going to be obedient uh, to the voice of Christ. And so we're going to sit here and we're going to wait. And everybody had the same mind. They wasn't thinking about Mars and they wasn't thinking about uh, uh, work and they wasn't thinking about And it says, and such Suddenly there came a sound. It came from heaven, y'all, uh -huh, as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. We need God's glory to come into the house again. My God, we, we, we need God's glory to come in and give us visitation again. Praise God. We, we're not. We're not praying and fasting for visitation. God, I want you to come in and I, I want you to illuminate this place. I want you to come in and, and destroy the yokes in this place. That's not what we go for. We go for it because we ain't got nothing else better to do. So let me go on to the church house. But you're not on mission. You're not on plan. You should be on your mission when you go to the church because the preacher who God says that I'm going to send for the church, he has a word for you. And in that word, he's going to speak a word into your life. And you're to take that word and go back out into the world and minister. And I know some folk want to be their be they own pastor. It don't work that way. He said, I'm going to send you pastors. After my own heart, they're going to teach you, they're going to lead you, and so we want to do our own things. My God, we are sick people. He says, uh, it says, and there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Uh huh. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, wait a minute, hold it. You, you got to get this down because if not, uh, what did I say? A case of misunderstanding. You're going to miss the whole point in what Jesus was saying. It said here, look, come on, in Acts 2, 1 through 4, and it says, And there appeared unto them clothed in tongues like as a fire. Come on, it goes like this. And it sat on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, you can't miss this part because God has put something in here that he wants you to understand that when Shiloh comes and that when the Holy Ghost comes, he says they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Here's the evidence. And they begin to speak with other tongues. Now, some folk want to say, well, they were just doing that because of the people that was there. Baby, you better keep on reading your Bible because there's a whole bunch of folk that spake with other tongues, not because who was there, but God was still uh, God was still doing what Jesus asked them to do. Praise God. Amen. Didn't, didn't Jesus say in John 17, uh, and, and I forgot what it was, 17, uh, 22, where he says, uh, well, he was saying that, that God blessed them that, 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 that hear his word, hear their word. As we hear the word of Christ, we have to believe it and don't let others uh, mislead us and turn it into something that it's not. It says, and they begin to speak with other tongues. It says, come on now. It, it wasn't your spiritual leader who, who taught you how to speak in tongues. It wasn't the choir director. It wasn't the mother of the church. It wasn't the pastor. It, it, it wasn't your godfather, your godmother. It, it wasn't your granny. It, the, the, it says, they spoke. Uh huh. And they, they spoke with tongues as the Spirit give utterance. The Spirit comes in and do it. This is not, we read earlier, this is not the work of man, but this is the work of God. And so what we find ourselves is, we find ourselves trying to do the work of God. Come on, I'll teach you how to speak in tongues. The devil is a lie. You didn't find nobody here teaching. Jesus taught. Jesus didn't 
excuse me, teach his disciples how to speak in tongues. Hello. But all of a sudden, we're going to go down to this, to this place, and, and, and they're going to teach you how to speak in tongues. Come on in the back room. We're going to No, no, you need to tarry for it, baby. You need to ask, because Jesus has already said, I'm going to send it back. But he's, he has sent it back for a prepared people. Your body's supposed to be the temple of the Holy Ghost. He's just waiting to fill you. Here in Acts 4 and 8, it says, uh, and being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me, for John, come on, here it is. Don't get it twisted, okay? For John truly baptized with water. Oh, I've been baptized. I got all I need. The devil is a nigh. There, there go another, another trick of the devil. Yeah, it's because we don't want us to come to the Bible, to the word of God. Uh huh. It says, uh, 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 for John truly baptized with water. It says, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. What's the Holy Ghost? It's the third person in the Trinity that God is going to send that's going to lead you and guide you into all truth. And not only that, when he fills you, you're going to speak in an unknown tongue. Yes. Look it up, baby. Don't just, don't just trust me. It says, when they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? They, they, they went off on a tangent again. They, they went off on a misunderstanding. They didn't really understand the cause of Christ. But here Christ puts them in check. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the othermost parts of the earth. The Holy Ghost come that we might be a witness for God. Yeah. It, it, it comes that we might uh, do our due diligence to work for God. We're building the kingdom of heaven. We're building the kingdom of God. Yeah. It says, and when he is come, John 16 and 8, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin. Wait a minute, baby. Come on now. The spirit of truth come to reprove the world of sin. Let me just shut my mouth. It's okay. Uh, they talking pornographic stuff. I, he, 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 ha, 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 ha. Oh, they going out after work. They going to be having drinks. I'm going with y'all. No, uh-uh. The Bible says, what fellowship have light and dark? Well, they going to say that, you know, I'm not a team player. Well, stand up for God, baby. You ain't got to go and be hanging out. It doesn't matter what they say. The Bible says, let every man be a liar, but let God be true. Tell them, just tell them flat out, because some of y'all, y'all want to be uh, a secret agents for God. Tell them, look, I don't do that. I'm saved. I've been delivered from all that. I don't go out drinking. Now, if you want to go someplace, you know, where we ain't going to, y'all ain't going to be doing all that drinking, i go along with you. But if y'all going to be doing all that drinking and all that, I, I ain't going along with all that. Fare thee well. I'll see y'all at work Monday morning. Come on now. You, you got to stand up somewhere in life and draw a line in the sand and say, if God be true, let God be true. But if devil, if the devil going to be true, who was that? That was uh, 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 the preacher said that, that, that uh, if God, if Baal be God, let's serve him. But if God be God, let's serve God. Yeah. So who is it? What are we going to believe? Yeah. He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. St. John 16 and 8. This time that we as a church draw a line in the sand. It's time that we as a church, praise God, we would come to grips with the resurrection of Christ and just say, you know what? For God, I'll live and for God, I'll die. Stop faking it. Y'all remember y'all, y'all fit these babies. Stop faking the funk. You faking. Pull the mask off. It's time to be real with it. Praise God. We want to run around here looking like the world, acting like the world. Come on now. Let's do this thing and let's do it for God. In Ephesians 3 and 20, it says, For now, 
I won't even go there. Praise God. Amen. Let me be perfectly clear, Jesus said, when he talked about in 44 through 49. He says, and behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. Now, let's be real with this and, and, and let's, not be, let's not be ignorant. You don't have to go to Jerusalem to wait for the power. It's just that's where they were. But Jesus said, I'm going to send it back. And he says that it is needful for you to the working of the ministry. So now it's time for us that we might work. It's time for us as we, we celebrate this resurre resurrected Christ, as we celebrate uh -huh, this man from Nazareth, if we, if when we celebrate the carpenter's son, let's celebrate, praise God, in uh, obedience unto him. And let's celebrate that we might be obedient children and not disobedient. Let's celebrate unto him, praise God, amen, that we understand the call of God. He didn't save us that we might just sit and do nothing, praise God, amen. Teaching in Sunday school is good. YPWW, whatever you teach, that's good. But baby, outside of the four walls, praise God, is where the real thing goes on, praise God. That's where you're going to meet, huh, the lions and tigers and bears, oh my, lions and tigers and bears, oh my. That's when, praise God, the rubber really meets the road, and that's where the Holy Ghost wants you to be, wants you to be outside of the four walls that you might, whoo, thank you, Jesus, have some encounter, praise God, with some folk that the Holy Ghost may speak unto their life, that God, that he might manifest himself unto them, and that he might draw them unto God, and that's what this is all about, drawing uh, men unto God. It, it is good to draw them to your church, but they need to be drawn unto God. And so God sent the Holy Ghost that we might be empowered, that we might be, praise God, equipped to do the work. And so today is a good day. And uh, uh, let me be perfectly clear that uh, we need the Holy Ghost and we need the, resur the spirit of the resurrected Christ uh, in our life if we're going to be effective uh, in this walk for him. Uh, don't tell me you're doing something and I don't see the work. Uh, it's time that we will be that lighthouse. Uh, it's time that we will be that light uh, set up on a hill that cold folks will see us and magnify God and so I want you to know God today in the form of flesh Jesus Christ died for us and he rose on the third day and I want to say to you while you celebrate today and while you barbecue and you're going out to dinners remember the cause and why we celebrate we celebrate because it, it, uh, it allows us as the Gentiles to be grafted in because we had no hope if it wasn't for Jesus. And so God has this master plan. And in this master plan, you can be a part of it today. And so let me speak to the backslider. You, you, you backslidden and you, you know you're not in the place where you should be. Today is a good day to celebrate Christ with coming back to knowing the Lord and chief. Knowing, knowing our master today. Uh, Reestablishing the fellowship today. It's not too late if you got, if you got a, 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 a breath in your body. It's not too late today to come back to God. It's not too late to be obedient to God's word. And then for those that don't know God, and you might be listening, I want to let you know today is a good day. You might just be celebrating to celebrate, but I want you to have something really to celebrate about. Praise God. When I got saved, it was a celebration. I had no uh, need for nicotine, and I, I had no need for alcohol, and I had no more need for the drugs, and I had no need for the other affairs outside of my relationship, 
Praise God. Amen. It was a time to celebrate because God had came in and saved my soul. And God can save you. It doesn't matter what you've done. That I was sitting on that same seat. But I've done this and I've done this and I've done this. And, and the preacher said, it doesn't matter what you've done. God can save you. That's why it's so important to go in to the prison because they deserve to know Jesus Christ in the pardon of their sin. So let me be perfectly clear, dear hearts. Let us serve God to the fullest. Let us come back to the altar and let us seek God. Let us seek God that the glory of God, that the Holy Ghost may fill us and deliver us. Today is a good day. Search the scriptures. Jesus said, you do err for not knowing the scriptures and the power of God. So we want to say to you today, happy Resurrection Sunday. We want to say you, to you today, we hope that we said something that would encourage you on today. I want to let you know that all hope is not lost. If there's blood still running warm in your veins, there's hope today. And God is still on the throne. And Jesus is soon to come. When we breathe our last breath, it's all over, baby. Our night has come. The day has ended. They used to say in the church, only what you do for Christ will last. So God bless you from the city of David Church here in Houston, Texas. I'm Pastor Dana Jones.